Hello everyone, in this video we will understand ADA.NET. So what is ADA.NET? ADA.NET is one of the very important component of .NET framework. With the help of that, we can interact any .NET application with the database. So you can see it is a written set of classes that can be used to interact with any data sources. So data source could be a database, a data set, XML file, any text file or any other data source which has data in it. So it stands for ActiveX data object and why it is? It is because this data, this whole framework of ADA.NET will interact with the object oriented programming language. So your programming language has a class and object. So inter to interact with such kind of uh, class and object, we have ADA.NET. So it is one of the very important component. You can see different types of .NET application taking from Windows, Web, Console or any other can be interact with ADA.NET just, just not to connect to database. We can also execute command in it and retrieve the data from it. And now what are the different data providers in it? So by means of data providers, it means what data source is there. So one of the very important data provider is SQL Server. And it is highly used in .NET framework. There is something called as Oracle as well. There is OLEDB. Just like JDBC we have in Java, we have OLEDB. Uh, we have ODBC just like JDBC, I'm so sorry, uh, like that. So these are the data providers which you can use in the .NET. But SQL Server is the most recommendable or advisable data provider among these four. So we're going to use SQL Server throughout our ADA.NET course. So now if you see your Visual Studio, I have Visual Studio 2010. I'm using a very absolute version of it, but uh, it gives me a soothing performance and I do not want to go with those lengthy download uh, of Visual Studio 2019 or 17. So that's why I have a very absolute version of Visual Studio 2010. So if you see this SQL Server, now it is important to understand what is SQL Server. Now it has two varieties. One SQL Server Management Studio, SQL Server Management Studio and if you see this studio, uh, it has uh, I mean large versions but uh, it is of around 8 GB or so. I do not know the exact uh, size but you can check it out what is the recent version. It, it is a complete studio just like Visual Studio 2010. We have IDE of SQL Server. It, it is known as SQL Server Management Studio of, of around 8 GB or more than that. So you can use this or you can use an inbuilt version of SQL Server comes with your Visual Studio. So there is inbuilt SQL Server. Now if you have a very uh, you know, larger requirement of uh, um, executing command and retrieving data or if you have large data sets or data center or maybe database, then you can use SQL Server Management. Uh, it is actually highly advisable in companies and so on. But if you are in the learning phase, you can use inbuilt SQL Server uh, in Visual Studio. And I recommend this as well if you are learning. So we're going to use this option because I do not want to waste my space here. <laughs> you can see that it is uh, uh, very, I already have 2010 of uh, around 3 GB and then on the top of that I have 8 GB of uh, management studio. It is more than that but uh, let's say it is of 8 GB. So that's why I'm going to use an inbuilt SQL server in Visual Studio. So there are two varieties. Now if you are using inbuilt SQL server, if you see your Visual Studio and if you try to fetch this SQL Server, then you will see that there are other two things. So there is something called as local database. I will show you just in a bit. So there is a local database and there is something called as service based database. So there are another two varieties in it. And let's see how, how to see these. So I'm going to open my Visual Studio, you can see. So this is 2010 Ultimate, it is freely available now, you can use it. 
So see, if you are having management studio, you see that this is a different IDE and this is a different IDE. You need to connect these two IDEs and how you can connect these with the help of server explorer. So this is your server explorer. You can see here, I'm going to create a new project here so that you can understand it in a, in a precise manner. So let's say I have created a console application, although I do not need it right now, but let's say that we have a console application. You see there is a data connection written. Let me magnify it so that you can see it. You see that there is a data connection. You can use connect to database here, which will connect. Which you can use Microsoft SQL Server here and then continue which will basically give you a, which will ask you a prompt you that what is the server name of SQL Server Management Studio. There you have created a server. So you have to provide your server name. Maybe it is a computer name. So you will give that. And if you have used Windows authentication, then you directly have to, you know, just give OK or test connection. Otherwise, you have used SQL Server authentication in SQL Server Management Studio. Then you have to give the username and password of that management studio and then it will allow you to you know connect these two IDEs. So this is like for management studio and not for the inbuilt uh, uh, SQL server. This is for the management studio. So although we are not using it but uh, this is one way. So this is a server explorer where your whole uh, you know database is being created and tables are going to be created. So I have this application and if I I, I hope that uh, I'm so sorry. I think what this is, is this is, uh, I hope that you know what is Solution Explorer and Server Explorer. Uh, if you if you do not know, then please go uh, through my series of uh, console application C Sharp. There I have explained what is Solution Explorer. So here in Solution Explorer, you can see I do not have any database. So we have to create one, right? So I'm going to click on console application 9. I'm going to add a new item. So when I gonna add a new item, you have to go to data here and you can see there are two options, local database and service based database. Now the difference between local database and service based database is you see local database has first of all it is having an extension of .sdf and service based database is having an extension of .mdf. Now difference is very simple. If you have a very small requirement of database then you can use local database. If you have a large requirement of a database then you can use service based database. Another difference is local database will give you a few options of uh, data definition. I mean data manipulation language or data definition language it gives you very few options just like it will give you you can create database and you can create tables there however when you use service based database it gives you large options you can create tables you can create store procedures you can go for transaction you can go for views and so many other things so let's let, let's take a one by one database so I have uh, taken local database database one dot sdf and let me add it so once I add it, you can see there is a one dot sdf is there in the console application. I'll tell you about this as well, but right now you just have to cancel it. So you can see that database one dot sdf is uh, is been uh, there in this is there now in the server explorer. When I uh, open it, you see that it has two option only. One is table and one is replica replication. So it has a few options only, right? Again, I'm gonna go to this console application, add a new item here. And now I'm going to use this service based database and I'm going to add it and uh, within a few seconds. Uh, yeah, so one dot MDF is there and I'm going to cancel this. You see this one uh, database one dot MDF that is service based database. I'm going to open this. You see it has a large options. You can create database diagrams here, tables, views, store procedure, functions, synonyms, types and assemblies. So that's why I told you that. Uh, uh, this uh, one dot sdf is a compact version you can say or one dot mdf is having a large options of uh, of databases so this is the this is the difference uh, of uh, inbuilt sql server you have two options one is you can go for local database or you can go for service based database although we're going to use this one because it has large options but it is not necessary you can use local database if you do not need you know all those uh, 
the functions. So this is one thing. Uh, now, uh, apart from this, uh, we have to see another thing as well. Okay, so this is okay. Another thing is in uh, so we have data providers. Now, one thing you need to understand here. Let me create this diagram so that you can understand. So suppose that I have a I have a whole .NET application here. Let me take a new pen here. So this is my .NET application here. Uh, let me create this diagram. Uh, then I have ADA.NET architecture here. Maybe this is ADA.NET whole architecture. And I have a database here. All right. So this is my database. Now you see that this .NET application has it. It could be a window. It could be a window application. It could be a console application, or it could be a web application. Right. Okay. Now a database has. Let me uh, take one simple separate line. I'm so sorry. This is <laughs> curvy, but no problem. So I have different database now. So I have SQL Server. Let's say again. I'm writing. I'm wasting your time, but uh, apologies for that. Uh, it will take few seconds only. Uh, ODBC, and then we have Oracle as well. Let's say. Let's say I have three, four types of data providers here. Now you see that how this .NET application is going to connect with this database. You know that it is going to connect with the help of this so-called ADA.NET. It sits between the database and your application. So it is a mediator component here, which will connect your application to the database, right? Now it is important. So now this .NET application and database is connected. But how this ADA.NET is going to connect with your database? How? Right? This is an again important question. Your .NET application somehow know that uh, there is a database with the help of ADA.NET. They are connected. But how this ADA.NET is going to connect with this database? How? So they are connected with something called as libraries. Okay. So you need to import the libraries. So if you are using SQL Server, then you have to import libraries such as system uh, dot data dot SQL client. Okay, you have to import it. Then and then only your ADA.NET is going to understand that you are using SQL Server. So this is important. Again, if you are using OLEDB, then you need to use system. I'm gonna say that data dot OLEDB. So that ADA.NET understand that you are using OLEDB data provider. If you are using ODBC, then it's the same thing. You just have to write ODBC here. If you are using Oracle, then you have to write Oracle client. Apologies, the uh, cannot see it, but you can see. So now your ADA.NET is being connected with the database. So this is important again, right? So uh, now ADA.NET will know that uh, the user is using SQL Server. That's why he had imported system.data.sql client. So I will give the functionalities according to it, right? Now in ADA.NET, apart from this, uh, it has different, uh, you know, uh, classes. So it has different classes such as, uh, and we will discuss that, those classes. So it has connection class, first of all. Uh, it has a command class after that. Uh, after that, it has data adapter or data reader. Uh, actually, reader and data adapter are both different, but however, the functionality is similar. So let's say they are data adapter and data reader and the last one is data set or data table. So these are the these are the classes of uh, ADA.NET which you will use uh, to manipulate the database. So with the help of these classes and the different method of these classes, you, now your application is going to use this classes so that you can you can execute any command to these databases and and subsequently you will get uh, some result back from here and you can show that result in your .NET application. So this is how you know whole thing works. I will definitely show you the ADA.NET architecture in a 
in, in just few minutes. But uh, this is how your application and ADA.NET and database are going to be interconnected with each other. Right. So I'll see you in the next session where we're going to discuss all these classes and what exactly they are doing. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like my video, then please uh, subscribe to my channel, share my video and like my uh, video. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next session.